two, one, we are live. You're gonna see me run. Well, you're hearing me run. <laughs> okay, now we're on. Three, two, one, we are. Here I am, everybody, and we're back. Guess what? The Plant Plug Podcast is out of hiatus. We are back. I'm your host, Taylor Lindsay. One of your favorite gardeners, because I hope everybody has more than one gardener in their life, <laughs> as well as I'm the owner and operator of Plant Plug Podcast, as well as The Plant Plug and The Plant Plug LLC, in case anybody's checking for me. <laughs> and uh, if you guys are wondering who's giggling on my on my show, that's Joe, everybody. Hey. Welcome, Joe, from Keep It Vertical. I'm so happy to see you. Thanks. I've been trying to get you since I started the show. I know. I'm actually really, really glad to be here. I woke up today like, today's the day. Today's the day. It's, it's happening today. It it has to happen today. So I'm just really glad to be here. It's Good. been a while. Because I definitely <laughs> wasn't ready for today. <laughs> I definitely wasn't ready. Uh, so, yes, this is season two. Episode three, right after Prosperity Market. I just have to mention them on every episode now. I Somehow I mention them on every episode season one, so now it's just like a habit. So this might slowly become their show. But uh, <laughs> I don't mind sharing. But thank you. Wow. Where have we been? Where have, where have we been? And here we are now. Yeah, it's still been, doing it. I know, breathing too. Oh I'm my gonna, God. I'm gonna crack open this coffee because I'm on, I just came from gardening. Um, I was working at the San Pedro Community Garden. This morning? This morning, yeah. It was a two-day project that included harvesting, de-weeding, uh, pest control, and everything's organic, organic, organic. Ooh. Yeah, so it definitely is a labor of love. Labor, yeah. it, you know, the, the word is labor, <laughs> as well as, um, why it's just my zen and it's my peace, but... We'll get into me and how I feel about everything. Everybody already knows I'm a gardener. We already introduced myself twice. So <laughs> I just want to tell everybody about you. And also, I hope they can get the essence of admiration, the deep admiration I have for you. Thank you. Uh, and I'll tell everybody how we met. Uh, it's actually interesting. Everybody I have on the show, I meet them in a very interesting way. Uh, so we go back like car seats. <laughs> but not like not like a Cadillac, more like a, a, a Ultima. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like an Ultima. <laughs> yeah, with a car seat. Yeah, like a 2009 Ultima. You know what I'm saying? Like it's still pushing. And... Uh, we uh, met at my birthday party yep. through your cousin. Shout out to Destiny. Yay, we love with you, Destiny. E. <laughs> right. She's doing so great. I love to see it. And uh, you actually inspired me to put, you put me on game to put myself up, to put myself on. Yay. And you inspired me to start my business. You inspired me to keep going. You inspired me to release my book. Yes, 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 yes. I was, I was on your, I was on your head about that. I yeah, you that. were when we first met. <laughs> when we first met, and you told me everything, and you told me the power of sharing. You showed me the prosperity and peace that comes with sharing your resources, as well as sharing your struggles. Yeah, not so much glamorizing them, but let people know that this is what it takes to get where I'm at now. Absolutely. So another thing is, not only do you have your own poetry book. You had a boutique in South Central. Yes, I did. As well as you own the international brand. It was in Africa. <laughs> All over it the world. It was in Africa now. I saw that with the Versace, Versace. With, with the Versace socks <laughs> and the, the Versace shoes. We say Versace here. Um, everybody know how old I am now. <laughs> you own the brand Keep It Vertical. And you also Keep have a website. Keepitvertical.org. That's where everybody can find you. And you also make websites for small business owners. Yes. Yeah, I know a lot about what you got going on. I, I am <laughs> checking for you more than Nike is checking for you. <laughs> I, I stay in. I stay in the know about what you have going on. I your appreciate monthly that. things to everybody. So for people that don't know about Keep It Vertical and also don't know about you, tell them everybody where they can find you. All social media platforms, okay. and also tell them what you have going on right now. All right. So, as mentioned, I am Joe from Keep It Vertical. You can find me at keepitvertical.org if you're looking for me online. Instagram is Keep It Vertical with one underscore. Facebook is Keep It Vertical or Joe Virago. And what else I got? Twitter is yeah. <laughs> you're on Twitter. I, I barely use it honestly. Like, yeah. I need to I need to tweet more. But for those that are tweeters, um, it is that one girl Joe. Just that yes. One girl Joe. I love that name. I always just felt like it, it fit me. Mm -hmm. um, not in the sense of like, and when I explain it, it's not like I looked at myself as a small person, but it was just like, I always felt like 
I don't want to say unseen in a way, but it was just right. like, oh, like, like you know, just that one girl. Like, oh, just like I was oh. just Joe, you know, like I was just that one girl, Joe. It wasn't like you people knew me through people. Um, so it was either like growing up, you knew me through my sister, you knew me through my, when I moved to LA, people knew me through my cousin. So I was like, oh, just that one girl, Joe. And then I played off of it because I'm like, yeah, that one girl with a business, that one girl with a book, that one girl with a this. Yeah. Like, yeah. That one girl building websites. That one girl building websites. That one girl giving yoga poses. <laughs> that one girl I caught on KTLA while I was gardening in the morning. That the chickens. was exciting. I know. I didn't even know that that was happening. So honestly, without you, didn't you know? no, they no, think, hell no. See, they, they never told funny. me. They think it's funny to surprise like that so we can start crying on camera. I have a story about that. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, honestly, without you, I would not have known really? that Keep It Vertical was on TV. The the company that orchestrated putting me on KTLA Morning News didn't even tell me I was on the news and didn't send me an email to like a month after your DM came. And I was like, ah. My plant plug already put me up on it. So thank y'all very much. But yeah. um, Ben knew that as of, what, 30 days ago? Right. So. Yeah, wow. Yeah, thank you for plugging me. Oh, I got you. I've been. <laughs> With my opportunities. Yeah. I wouldn't have known, honestly. That was, I was so excited to see that. And uh, I remember you did the thing with, was it MoMA or Mocha? Mocha, okay. yeah. Museum of Contemporary Art. Oh, I did the thing with, okay, this is the thing. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Holy Spirit, activate. activate. <laughs> Holy Spirit, activate. Hold on. That's crazy. I feel, I'm trying not to cry because I'm so overwhelmed with joy for both of us. I'm really trying not to cry. We're literally the shit. I, ah! <laughs> We're kind of cool. We're kind of cool. Hold on, hold on. As soon as something happened for you, it happened for me. I did something with Mocha too. Ooh, yeah, do yeah. tell. Yeah, so what happened was Last year, I got a call from um, her name's uh, their name's Zoe Black on Instagram. Okay, and I was part of a group chat of different farmers and gardeners. And there's not a lot of gardeners of color in the country, let alone in, in LA. Yeah, and uh, Regenerative Collective put everybody that they knew in a group chat. And it wasn't for followers, it wasn't an engagement group or anything like that. And we weren't really all at the same garden, we we're actually all in different places of town. They're like East LA, Vernon area, I'm South Central. Uh, Zoe. It's all over the place. Like, all over the place in the sense that they're here and they're not. Yeah, not, yeah. Not noodles. <laughs> noodles for noodles. Yeah, not um, like the right So right. then Zoe put out this call for uh, farmers and plant providers. Okay. Not so much produce, because most people I know that grow provide produce. Like Compton Community Gardens, Ivy Gardens, Bell Gardens, uh, Botanically Bry. They are produce producers. Okay. I'm the plant plug. I do plants. Yeah. So whenever they want fruit and vegetables, I'll just send them. So then I, I they said, we've been looking for people that do plants. So I said, okay, let's see what I can do, me. So then I had a wonderful um, master gardener named Juanita, uh, Juan, Juanet, sorry, <laughs> come to my house and look at everything. She's like, yeah, we just need some plants. I was like, how many? She's like, 50. I was like, 50? Okay, so I only gave them like 30, and then I gave them like 10 jumbo succulents that I've been propagating forever. And then I was like, where is this gonna be? Like, I'm picking another community garden, because that's what I was doing in 2021. And she's like, no, it's gonna be an exhibit in Mocha. So it was a, it was a tripod style, open. It was a, it, it's this amazing concept. Uh, Crenshaw Dairy Mart spearheaded it. Mocha picked it up for two weeks, extended it for another two weeks. So it was on exhibit for four weeks, but it was really limited because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And then what they had was they had engineers from USC and architects build it. It was made out of bamboo, kind of like TP style. Uh -huh. And then, but all the walls were growing plants where people can openly come and pick them and eat them. What? So it was a prototype, and they had a, a solar-powered irrigation system that misted the plants. It leaked on the first day. On the day of opening exhibit, it leaked. It made a huge puddle, so they closed it. But I went on opening day with my mom, and Aww. then they broke it down, and they moved part of it to Crenshaw Dairy Mart, and another part of it to downtown. Congratulations! Thank now you. that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. A little TP with the wow. Yeah. So, because imagine you, we are so conditioned to go into a grocery store. Yeah. And have to pay before we do anything for it, or f face pro fear and face prosecution, right? Yeah. Imagine you go into a grocery store and you grab whatever you want. I'd have so much stuff. Right. <laughs> and also, like, I feel like I'm stealing. Yeah. Oh, even absolutely. Not. Absolutely. I'm, we're not stealing, by the way. You can have this. Like, yeah. even the apprehension when I give people gifts or give people stuff, because we're givers. Pisces are givers. I don't... Well, I'll speak for you and I, not all of them. Yeah. But we be giving. We are the givers. We're giving and too much sometimes. I know. We I give. Know. This is my dinner. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm hungry, but here you go. I'm hungry, but here you take it. <laughs> and then they're like, that's that stomach growling? No, um, no. that's my mind racing. Just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. 
my mind makes those same noises as my stomach. My mind. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, uh, <laughs> thinking of your mind. Oh, I, know, I have to think about that one for a second. So, uh, yeah, I was just, I, I was a part of that, and that was really, really amazing. And I was just, wow. So you did mocha too. Yeah. So what about your mocha thing? That, that I knew what it was, but tell the people what it was. So my mocha thing was I had a pop-up. I was a part of an LA Original pop-up inside of mocha. Oh, okay. So LA Original, for those that are unfamiliar, is a collective of brands that were starting in Los Angeles. And we all create either products in Los Angeles, we started our businesses here. And part of being in the um, LA Original family is you have to give back to the Downtown Women's Center. Oh. So we provided profit to women that were transitioning out of homelessness from, the, from our sales of our products and we had a pop-up shop at mocha for the holidays so you could literally go from go to the museum and then go to the pop-up store and uh -huh. then go and get a keep a vertical shirt and then my friend milka media shout out to milka media I was gonna, wait i was gonna plug her <laughs> first you just messed up it's, i'm sorry because she because she did that for me for sure like she came it was her we brought the kids like we went into the store she did the video because that was the first time oh, i had ever seen her. my absolutely okay. that was the first time i had ever seen my clothes on the shelves i've never seen my clothes on the shelves until they were in mocha mm. so for them to be on the shelves for the first time inside of a major art museum like right. that i was like First off, who's that girl? girl. That's like my right, son. Right. Um, but I was like, I need my, I need my team to come out. It has to be filmed, like, because I want to remember what my first initial reaction was, and right. the media provided that for me. So, I gotta plug her first if I can, you know. Just walk in, make a video, make a video. Yeah. <laughs> No, you just beat me to it. I no, you know, you know, you didn't beat One, me to two, it. One, two, three, milk and media. No, <laughs> no actually, I I shouted her out in episode three, so in season okay. one, okay. yeah. That's I, yeah, so I should have okay. been on here sooner. That's my fault. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. You got it. Like she's just gonna get all the seasons now. That was it. Now she's two for two. She's two for two. Two for two. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So um, yes. So we're in LA originals. So also, what I used to do on Flow, and you did the show there. That's the last time I saw Destiny. Was uh, we used to do when we our first year. Mm -hmm. Everything we did went to Downtown Swimming Center. Oh, I love that. Everything we did, all the donations we got. Uh, all the the monetary we would just all the money we got we'd go right into buying stuff for the downtown women's center because the last one of the last things that would be on the list for buying socks underwear uh, that these you know they wouldn't really get budget for and also uh administration yeah. materials for those with periods so i love the yeah, downtown we were women's center. Our flow we were there actually we did a calendar i wasn't in the picture though for many reasons but there's a calendar that aunt flow did for all the girls and it was shot in the downtown women's center parking lot Oh, that's so I'm not cute. gonna pull up the picture. Everybody's so cute. I'm not in the picture. Everybody's five years younger, so we all look really cute. But I was there in spirit. I see my spirit flying around. But um, yeah, it's so wild. It's a it's a small world and a big world at the same time. Right, right. Yeah, to so. both be a part of some of the same organizations. I did a. I think it was two to three years ago. Mm -hmm. I did a gift wrapping class with the women at the downtown of the women's oh, center. Wow. So we took wrapping paper and I taught them. I I am. I don't know where I think I get these skills from. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. Right. Um, I took a class myself, but right. I went to the downtown women's center and taught a class on gift wrapping um, one holiday season. So. Gift wrapping, if somebody needs to get a job, gift wrapping is where it's at. They, wrap mine. If you wrap <laughs> them well, people will pay you for that. Absolutely. Uh, it's top dollar. Um, Aisha's, uh, Aisha's Closet does it now, too. If anybody needs uh, wants to support a black business, Aisha's Closet, they're on Instagram as well. They do a lot of gift wraps. Oh, um, I love that. Yeah, and... Um, don't go to Macy's. You don't gotta go to Macy's. I don't even think they do it anymore, do they? Uh, in the back? You know, well, when I when I worked at, <laughs> when I rest in peace in my job, when I worked at Macy's, <laughs> we did, but okay. it was I, I, obviously I worked at Macy's before COVID because, and I know, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't say obviously because everyone doesn't know, but I lost my job at Macy's because of COVID. Oh, yeah, I was laid off. I was one of the people that was laid off because of COVID. I didn't know they were laying people off. Yeah, oh yeah and then what my job was I, I worked in the morning so i just brought this a lot of the stock out to the floor oh, okay so you know if like manufacturing plants are backed up and they didn't have a lot of stuff then right. it, then it was like well then we don't have hours for y'all and it's not enough product for me to even bring y'all here because that so that was my job what i did there I so it could have been by position but yeah i was one of the people that was laid off in macy's but yeah when i worked there Oh, I'm sorry. And we did gift wrapping at that time, but maybe not now. And you know, it's so interesting because I didn't think that I would like working at Macy's. Right. I loved it. Really? <laughs> so I actually was kind of like sad. Wow. But having a business, I like seeing clothes before they got out on the floor. I see. So and I marked down on the sales price. 
Right. <laughs> I see. Oh, I love doing markdown. We used to call it disco at GNC. Ooh. Got yeah, short for discount. Yeah, basically. That oh, if you if you need the plug on supplements and things like that, I got you. Like, I I was I was in GNC magazine twice. What? Yeah, in the back. Yeah, I was in it twice. I didn't get a lot of notoriety for it, like I thought I would, because I went super hard for that job until I got fired. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to oh, hear that. Shade. Shade. Oh. And they sued me. What? Yes. For uh, unemployment. Awesome? Yeah. yeah. You can sue people for being awesome? Damn, girl, we'd be in prison. No, no, honestly, dead ass. But I, that's why I'm like, I can't even think of why they would be suing you, especially to put you in the magazine twice. You'd be a great employee. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I had clients that would, oh, when I transferred stores, would come looking for me and ask me for a name because I really cared about them and giving them what they wanted, not upselling them, not things like that. And I studied my behind off. I went above and beyond. I was going to trade shows and everything. They don't ask you to do that. You know, and I was trying everything before I sell. You know, I was I was a little cracked out. I had a little bit of caffeine, <laughs> but at least I knew. You know, so you know I implement that with my business. And I think also enough about GNC because they're not paying me to say any of this. But it's not mm -hmm. good. It's not. I don't believe all publicity is good publicity. I don't believe. That. Yeah. Because integrity is everything. Absolutely, because I agree. Deal, if I'm being messy, I'm gonna attract messy people. Agree. If I get publicity for going to do this, this, and that. Those are the type of people that are gonna follow me, and that's not really what I'm trying to cultivate for myself. Period. So um, it's not good publicity. I don't need GNC coming for me. <laughs> I know that I wanted to own my own store at some point. I no longer want to, and I went super hard for that company in the magazine twice. If anybody's checking for me, it's like 2016, and my hair was looking the best, but they, they still look <laughs> my picture. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, that's the thing about owning your own business, though, because I was telling I was telling a oh, you know Venus. Yes, yes. Venus yes. just came out with an art book. If you want a coffee table book, yes, all of all their watercolors, you can get the hard cover, cover copy or the soft cover. Oh. And I told them the same way you told me. Really? Yes, the same. Watch yes, it come back around full circle. Yes. I love that. Yeah, so they, I love uh, that. they put out their book and it looks amazing. I just need to save a little more coins so I can buy it. But the soft cover is only 40. The, 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 but I want to be in a place where one day I could buy 10 and give them away as gifts. Yeah. So yeah. It's just that, that's where I want to be. So artists need to be paid. But Period. nonetheless, I was telling them while we were talking about business was that these little jobs show us and teach us how to run businesses. Oh, absolutely. And also the things we like about the job, we can implement in our own business. But you just go from a nine to five as an entrepreneur to a 12, 16. Yeah. That's the thing. And you have to navigate a lot of things. And I was also told that, yeah, you can go to school to learn how to open a business and how businesses are structured, but nothing like the real world experience tells you how to run a business. No, that no. You can get bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, all that. And that's cool. You'll know about economic systems. You'll know about the three branches of government. You'll know about when uh, Herbert Hoover was president and <laughs> stuff like that. I heard he was black. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, you'll find, well, they won't teach you that in college. That's different. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to actually running a business, it's different, but these little jobs. Yeah. And I know people call them little jobs because they think people at the front lines aren't really worth it, even though they're the people making the corporations the money. Period. Um, these jobs show us what it takes. Like, I can tell you how to run inventory, how to run planograms, yep. how to do marketing at, a, at the forefront because that I, that's where we're meeting the customers. The right. cashiers are meeting the customers. Right. The st people that stock know what moves on the shelf. Corp is still upstairs trying to figure it out. Corbin don't even know who these people are sometimes yeah. in the store. So, so that's the takeaway. All every as long as something has meaning and purpose. So if you find the meaning and purpose in working at these jobs, and you want to own your own business, that's fine. But also, I don't shade nine to five. Never. But some people do, and I don't shade going to college. Right. But some people do because they want to. If you want to be a millionaire, you gotta leave. Shut up. Leave people alone. Shut up. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's path is different. And that's why I don't shade nine to five either because I freelance. So with yeah. freelancing, you work in auto shows and you work in offices. You're just doing so many different things. But I tell people never get a job that does, or I'm not going to say never, but when it comes to me, I don't want to get a job that does not relate to where I'm going, even in my business, you right. know? So when I started working in the hospitals and teaching workplace violence classes two years ago, right. I only did that because I wanted to be a better public speaker. Ah. And I knew that if I could get in front of people to teach classes, especially about something that at the time I wasn't um, well versed on, mm -hmm. then I knew that I can take that quality once I got better at it and then use that in my business. And now... I can get in front of people and 
speak and not and, and it doesn't bother me, any, me anymore because I've taught classes of 40 people. I've taught classes of people where there weren't enough seats and people were just standing up against the wall. Wow. And every single class that I teach, I get evaluated. Oh. So and, and I'm teaching nurses and doctors and like adults. So these are grown folk that's really writing paragraphs like when you said this, I thought that was great, you know? So to be evaluated on my speaking abilities while I'm teaching classes in the medical field that I've never desired to be in for two years, mm -hmm. I was like, that will relate to me and keep it vertical. But even like I said, working at Macy's, I got to see clothes before they came out. So I was learning how fashion works. So right. if you do have to get a nine to five, now granted you might already have one and, and it works for you. I would suggest getting something that will give you the skills that will cross over into what there you're you trying know. to do. Right. That's it. That's right. how I say it. <laughs> Yeah, that that's the thing. It's just I feel <clears throat> we're so well. I growing up, I was very pushed. Not my parents. My parents are like do whatever you want. Just don't kill anybody or kill yourself. <laughs> like seriously, they that's how they were. They like they never put the kids. You know, you be a lawyer. They didn't do that, and I think that did wonders for us. Yeah. Now mind you, I made plenty of mistakes, and mm -hmm. you can find my mug shots on Google. But <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> uh, I just feel career wise and work wise. It left so much. It left so much room. The horizons yeah. were this vast, and because of that, I think that as well as I real, I was really, really okay with not having a linear path when it came to career and entrepreneurship. Oh, I wish I understood that. Yeah, I like, was not like that. I know, right? Because. Do this job, college kids, yeah. get it together. Yeah, like, it was like me being that I like somebody actually told me to be a rocket scientist. I was one of the first people in my family to go to college, so it was like you have to be something meaningful and grand and big. So I wish I had that where you, like you said, you felt free to be like whatever. I always, I'm like I got to go to college, right. which I don't regret at all. But I'm not, I'm not as big as like feeling like you have to go to college as much as I did back then. You know, growing up, I was like, you have to go. Okay. And now I know that you don't necessarily have to go, that it can work if you don't go to college, you know? Yeah. Not preaching either way, but yeah, I didn't I, know that there was an option outside yeah, of not going to college. There's a path and the path is all over the place. Yeah, I didn't know the that. The path is not a straight line, right? And I, I did impose those beliefs at my, at, at, on myself at some point in my adulthood, but because that's what you were supposed to do, that was supposed to be the disindicated step. But looking back, I, I I let that go, that thought go immediately. I really did, and even today, like a lot of people don't know, I don't have a high school anymore. Wow, no, I didn't know that. Because I just, I don't. I went to a school that changed their graduation requirements like the last semester, and I didn't pass. I, mm. I, pa I had enough credits to graduate, and I finished all my general education in my first two years. I, w I was on honor roll and everything. Then I kind of stopped caring. Yeah. I, I felt like other people around me didn't care either, so why would I care? Yeah. And I got really into music, and I kept my grades good enough so I wouldn't get kicked off. Uh, so I got kicked off a track, but so I wouldn't get kicked out of marching band. Mm. So I kept my grades good enough for that. And then they said, hey, um, if you don't get enough credits in economics, you can't walk the stage. I failed economics. In one subject? Yeah. It was... And they didn't give it to me. It was robbed. I felt you were robbed. Yeah. Yeah, yes. And then they, <laughs> I came back to finish and they said, well, you didn't fail enough to be a fifth year senior, so go home. They kicked me out of school. You didn't fail enough? I didn't fail enough. I only needed two classes. If I would have did world history and economics, I would have had enough of everything because they were followed in the same category. I didn't know economics and world history were in the same category. So if I passed that, I was like, okay, I'll just do a third of a day. They said, you didn't fail enough. You can't be a fifth year senior. Go home. You didn't fail enough to do the whole year, but you also didn't pass enough to graduate. So yes. then what options do I have? Uh, go to adult school and start from scratch. <laughs> Can I tell them real life? Go to adult school. I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. So I'm so I, glad that you. I got that a job selling. You are, thank you. <laughs> but people will be quick to judge. Absolutely. Tony Hawk didn't graduate high school. He he was a dropout though. He straight up dropped out. His first his first movie he ever did was called Gleaming the Cue, mm -hmm. and he he pretended to be a Pizza Hut delivery boy, which he was in real life. Wow. Yeah, that movie came out in 1989, I believe. That was the first. He was in there. Uh, Christian Slater was the main. I, I, I just know these things. But um, <laughs> so Tony Hawk, you know things like that. There's a lot. There's but, yeah. There's, there's lots a, of there's people lots of that people, did but not. But people will judge you. Yeah. And I got tired of telling that story. So just I guess for shock value, I would tell people, oh, I don't have a high school diploma, and um, I still got jobs. I still this is that. This is me. It's it's about. It's about being able to intelligence to me is not the same as memory and aptitude. 
Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not the same at all. Intelligence is application. Period. And ingenuity. And MacGyvering things. Yeah. And making something out of nothing. And and that's where the talent comes in too. Uh, when it comes to being smart, I just thought the kids that got the best grades just had the better memories. Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I can take it. I can remember something for a test, and I'll never remember that shit afterwards. It's about retention. Yeah. <laughs> I don't retention retain at? shit after yeah, the that's test. Insane. I learned it for Friday at 12 o'clock. Yeah. And Friday at 12 30, once but I walk out the room. That's ingenuity. I don't know. No that's more. ingenuity. That's punctuality. That's, to me, that's intelligence and that's talent. Whereas if I had you take that test two weeks later and you forgot everything, I would give you a fat F. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Because, but that's not the same. That's not fair. Right. That's right. not fair. I didn't need it back. I didn't need right. it then. I will never need this shit again. Right. <laughs> When's the last time you multiplied fractions? I've never walked anywhere and said, well, E equals MC squared. So that uh, must mean when I buy this shirt that I got to get these pants with it. It's never matter when I cut my check either. So right. <laughs> I think people need to respect other people's process. Period. Stop pushing. And I know people are selling these ebooks and these courses, but they're making it seem like there's only one way to do it. And they're heavily gatekeeping unless I buy five of your $50 ebooks. Then, I, then I'll never be shit in life and I just won't figure out how to move. Right. And it's just like, <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing. So also when it comes to entrepreneurship, know what kind of entrepreneur you want to be. It's not this umbrella term for everything. If you want to get into real estate, get into real estate. Yeah. If you want to get in, and it's not just stocks, real estate, and drop shipping either. There's so many, it's so compartmentalized and there's these face, I bet as soon as I said those things, three people popped up in your head. Right? <laughs> it's so compartmentalized and it's not just, oh, the only way you're going to make wealth and be happy is if you drop ship. Or if you get on Alibaba and uh, upsell things for 10 times the markup. Or if you get into a real estate and I forgot that thing where you buy houses and get a blank check and all this. Or, uh, <laughs> like flipping them up. Yeah, flipping the houses. But uh, uh, or if you take in uh, day trade stocks or if you get a forex pyramid scheme going or if you sell Herbalife or not if you, Herbalife I mean and I'm just <laughs> yeah, you had pyramid yeah, scheme no, I was yeah. like I mean Mary Kay because I did I did I think I did allegedly both. we have to say yeah. allegedly on this show allegedly oh, allegedly even if you allegedly did those things <laughs> allegedly but know what kind of entrepreneurship you want to get into uh, and owning a business is not for everybody I know people that are super that are content with working where they are now there's a difference between being content, being stuck, and being miserable. Yes. There's a big difference with that. And it's funny because I come from those jobs where, um, ooh, hold on, I'm gonna mute some names real quick in my mind. I, I've had a job where a lot of us were the same age in our 30s. Things get real when you're in your 30s, let me tell you. I never wanna be in my 20s again, I'll tell you right now. Thir my 30s are the best. Yeah. And we all had the same job. We all had the same, pretty much we all did the same thing, but different, different titles, right? And it was ripe with ne nepotism where I was. Ooh, Lord Jesus, there was so much nepotism. It was bad, if, and if you didn't have a baby by somebody that worked there, you were kind of outcasted. I'm not making this up. Stop. I'm not making this up. Wow. The people at the job were fertile. <gasps> so. <laughs> Um, but the thing about it was some people were so content spending 20 years, 10 years there. And it was cute. They would come to work and they would leave and they would mind their business. Mm. Now the people that claim they were content, they couldn't be happy for you. Yeah. They couldn't even, they, you, they couldn't be happy for you. And it, and then the people that were stuck, I, you know, it was just like, it was, it, they were very silent, which I appreciated, but <laughs> it was just like, whoa, like. Where are we and what are we doing? Yeah. But it's okay to just be, you don't have to be anything phenomenal. You don't have to be on the cover of magazines. You don't have to be a rock star. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. No. You know how hard it is to be a housewife? No, I don't know. honestly, how hard it is just raising and having kids alone. You know how hard it is just waking up every day and making it to the end of the night? Like, right. And keeping things clean. Yeah, keeping things clean. Keeping yourself clean. Right. <laughs> like, like all of the... Honestly, life in general right. is just difficult within itself. I mean, I, I mean, this is one big existential crisis for me. <laughs> <laughs> but life with life within itself is just can can be difficult with just so many changes and things right. going on. So you don't have to pile on things that will make it more difficult for you to manage right, that's trying to live up to something that doesn't fit you, you know? Yeah. Because there are some people that are made for exactly the things. Like, there are some people that are fit to be moms and never own their own businesses, and they love it, and that's what they want to do. Right. But then there's some people that are fit to not have kids and just run businesses, and then they love it. Right. There are people that run businesses and hate it. And, you know, for me, I think it's just about finding who you are, knowing yourself before you really make I'm not even gonna say lifestyle decisions because honestly, change. 
I've changed what I thought I wanted to be so many times. Me too. <laughs> I would say things that you can't, life changing decisions that you can't change it. Yes. Like with children. Permanent. You can't, you can't. No. Like it's interesting because somebody, I had somebody say, people are, people are quick to say they never want to get married at the same time to have children with somebody. Right. You can get divorced. But you can't take that baby back to the baby store. Right. You cannot do baby it. Baby gap is not for children. You know, like they Children's did. place is not for dropping off children. We don't leave kids at Chuck E. Cheese. You just, you have to. You know that was my dream job? Chuck E. Cheese? Yes. I, I was scared of Chuck E. Cheese. I so. wanted to be the big rat for so long. What? I dreamed of being Chuck E. And working there since I was like eight. What? I've interviewed twice. I, I got to the second interview. I realized it wasn't for me. The, the, the location that I wanted to work at is no longer there, the La Tierra location. Mm -hmm. And um, one time I went in there drunk. Stop. Is that? That's probably why I didn't get the first call back. But that was <laughs> back when I, I stopped drinking. I, was, I remember I was drinking pe uh, Peach Amsterdam. That, that rubbing alcohol with a that little... Peach New, New Amsterdam, right? Yeah. That was a jump off for a while. If you were, drink <laughs> if you were drinking back in 2009, that Amsterdam gin was a jump off. This is before Ciroc came out. So, yeah. Yeah, and Smirnoff was disgusting. I couldn't do it anymore. But um, I went in there a little drunk, and I know they could smell it on me. I did not care. I'm like, it's just gin. Give me some I was like, can I get an application? They're like, here, take it, please. It's so hurt me. You went in there looking for an application? Oh, I thought you just went in there to, I don't know, go down the slides. <laughs> No, I always had this thing where like I just didn't want to interview. I just thought that was weird, like to go in there childless. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just think it's strange. And then so I went in there. I didn't go past the part where they stamp your hand and all that. I just like got an application. And then so then I cleaned up my act. I, I've been sober for nine years now. Amen. And thank you. Awesome. And um, I went back in and I was so excited. I was just like, oh, I got a call back. I went in for the interview and then I got to the second interview and they make you sing Happy Birthday in the birthday area. And, but that's, they told, I said, what was the biggest problem here? That was my question. Cause I said, did anybody have a question? I said, what is the biggest issue here? And I could tell it was weird cause there's a lot of nepotism in there. Mm -hmm. So the manager only ended up hiring her friends. I'm like, then why am I here? They have you sing happy birthday and sing left and right. Cause you have to do it nonstop. So they said, get ready to sing it at least 30 times a day. They said the worst problem with Chuck E. Cheese is that it's a handoff area between two parents that don't like each other. What? That's the biggest problem with Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, for a lot, and we don't know because we, you know, you're not in it unless you're living it. You know. Yeah. So actually, you know, as a single woman person, I am. I'm. I don't see those things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my parents are still together. So I was just. I would. Know, I don't know what the handoff like. I only knew the handoff between grandma and mama. Right. right. Yeah. So they said that's the biggest problem there. Sometimes they, the other parent won't show up. Sometimes they do show up and they're 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 cursing each other out in front of the children. And some locations. At Chuck E. Cheese. Well, some sell that white Zippendale and draft beer. Yeah. So some things are going to slip out, especially if that pay, that child support check bounced. Yeah, that's yeah. bad. They're upset. Yeah, yeah you're right. You Mama ain't got no wig on. Yeah, you yeah, can't She pay. got her bonnet on and she pissed. You can't pay rent in tickets. And you cannot <laughs> buy Infamil with tokens. Right. So what are we doing? So they said that's the biggest problem that happens at Chuck E. Cheese. It's a, it's a handoff center. Because I've seen the handoff in grocery store parking lots a lot where here's the baby car to car. Yeah. And But I, I didn't, it never occurred to me at a Chuck E. Cheese. Like of all places, it's like the cheapest, happiest place on earth. Like we can't afford Disneyland. Right. Yeah. We're not so taking please, our So please don't do that here. But they do it all the time. Interesting. I've seen it at McDonald's. Oh. That's where I've seen it at. The handoff, the mm -hmm. drop off. At McDonald's. So that's so interesting, Chuck E. Cheese. But you know what? There are so many kids there, and it's and I can only imagine that that for parents, they're just like, well, the kid wants to go to Chuck E. Cheese anyway, so right. just take the kid to Chuck E. Cheese, right. and I'll be there to get them. You right. know, the kid, you think it ain't paying attention, don't know nothing about the drama because they paying attention to Chuck E. Cheese, and the whole time y'all gonna cuss and fuss in front of the kid anyway. Right. Interesting, and I can only imagine how it does put the coworkers like in a very uncomfortable space yeah. to constantly see. The same scenario of just like yeah, um, and it becomes the consistent the drop off. Yeah. So that same couple, oh here they come again. <laughs> oh, oh, he got a new girlfriend. Oh, oh the same Ooh. people. Hey, hey, put a pause on that pizza because they they. So, oh man, it's about to be lit up in here. Right. Right. Hold on. I know she ordered the the four pack family pack, but apparently she's seeing the. Mm, she gonna see the girlfriend, and she gonna put that family pack back. And that juice is going right in her face. That oh, minute made. Oh my god! Wow, Chuck E. Cheese. Mm. Yeah. That would be a very interesting, so when I worked uh, a job, when I was working customer service, we always joked about having an anonymous blog 
where we uh, talked about just different customer interactions that were just like, I can't believe this person said this. I can't believe this happened to me. And we always joked about the how funny it would be to have an anonymous work blog where custom where, where uh, employees talk about customer interactions. Right. Completely random. So if that were an actual thing we did, I can only imagine how funny the stories from Chuck E. Cheese would be. That's wild. <laughs> if there was an anonymous blog about customer Just that. In employee interaction. Wow. Because I know there's Glassdoor, but that's for being an employer. Yeah. Employee. And then there's one for black people that just came out. I don't know the name of it. This young man just put it out. It's blowing up on TikTok. It is for how companies, they, they you rate it from one to five stars for how it is to work for it. They said people of color, but it's mostly for black people. Yeah, he's, and the TikTok is, are you really to risk your whole career and integrity for this? He's like, yes. <laughs> right, it's important. You know, somebody gave the army two stars out of five. If you're black. What? Yep. A lot of cadets did. Yeah. Two out of five. And you know what? And I feel like that's something that needs to be known, though. You know, as oh, a black yeah. person, I, before I go into an organization, I would like to know how is it for other black people to work here? I, Every job I've ever had, 80% I've had harassment. I have <clears throat> to, to the point where they'll either transfer me because I can sue mm -hmm. or uh, they'll handle it so poorly that I'll, people tell me, oh, you should have sued and got that money. They don't know what it's like to go through litigation. Yeah. They, they dig up everything. Yeah. When you're going, I've gone up against two companies. I've gone up against, uh, I'm not going to say who they are. I've been, to, I've been to court with two companies and they tried to ring you and embarrass you. Yes. But imagine if I went in there seeking more money. If I, I've never gone, I've only been the defendant. I've never been the plaintiff. But yeah. they will come for you. And I, people say, oh, you should just sue and sue. You do it. Yeah, you do it. I had somebody tell me that about um, uh, my, last, my previous job because it was kind of the same thing. And I just ended up quitting. And they was like, oh, I wish you would have told me because I would have called such and such. Honestly, no. I don't even have the desire to go right. through all of that. And you I just believe the story I'll, over and over yeah, and over again. Yeah, and it was a very painful experience for me. I, I broke down crying at work, and I just, that hasn't happened to me in a long time. Yeah. And I mean, this was, what, last year? I'm 30 years yeah. old. Like, oh, hell no. Now I got to get out. We cry for different reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> I was just, oh! Yeah. It's, it's, it's super defeating, and I had somebody tell me, well, Taylor, you are all the minorities in one. And like, wait a minute. Ooh. And I'm like, that's why. I have mm. yes, I have so many stories. I have so many only I've only had only twenty percent of my job is not face harassment. That's crazy. The best job I ever had was Planet Fitness. Wow. You see how I act in there hollering and stuff? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. I love Planet I'm like, hey, Fitness yeah. too. <laughs> I mean, that's good though. Planet Fitness, we were we stayed we were all cute. We cute. stayed out of each other's business. We did not date each other. Love which that. made the biggest difference. We had each other's back. When people would act out of pocket, not want to wear their masks, um, that's why I, I quit because somebody threatened me violently over wearing a mask. Yeah, I had enough of that. Yeah, um, the, they would have our back. They, I had management. We were all on it, and people were like, "Dang, you guys are purple gang, aren't you?" We're like, "You want to try it?" Right? Okay, you want to try it because we try all us? we all support each other. I love that. Team. Yeah, and we still do that to this day. Like, I don't even work there anymore, but it's still like, still to this day, we all we are you are you doing okay? How are you? You know, that's not in the protocol for how we're supposed to do Yeah. No, but we care about each other. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, that's just what it is. We share food with each other. It makes the biggest difference. I love that. Yeah. And it's hard, it's hard to find that in a company. I remember one company, Line Friends, I worked for, and we were all family. Like, it was a Korean BTS store. What? And everybody in there there's, was- Wait, um, there BTS stores? Yeah. Yeah, it was like the first one in Hollywood. So there, it's the only one, I believe, out in California, I wouldn't say. I think, or just out in, yeah, I think it is. Uh, but it's in, in Hollywood, and we literally supported each other, and we still do to this day, you know, a lot of my friends, because they at that time, that was when I was opening the Keep It Vertical Closet, so a lot of the people from Line Friends, they came out to my grand opening. We still talk and follow each other to this day. It's it's always love. I remember, actually, I saw one of my old Line Friend um, employees at Dave's Hot Chicken. I didn't know that he had worked there, and he didn't know that I was coming, but because it was me, he gave me free food. I was like, yeah, see, we, and this is like two years after the job. I'm like, we're yeah. all going to be family. Right. <laughs> like, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah it we're, was not, love. Uh, we're not hating on each other. It, it's just, it's such a thing because I've had people be so malicious and so stressed out. And I'm like, well, you don't calm down. We're working at a grocery store. Who right. cares? Who cares? <laughs> Y'all don't own none of this. No. You never will. You're replaceable. You're disposable. Period. We're getting, the cashiers are getting replaced by shopping carts. Right. Right. 
Right? There's an application flowing in right this second, honey. Yeah. Don't don't ever act like... And then if I don't show that I want a position to move up, they're like, well, she's not good enough. Did it? I'm like, how hard? Like, you want my firstborn? Like, right. What do you want from me? Like, they want you to care and not care too much at the same time. Absolutely. And, and I can't do that. And the thing I always got in trouble for, they're like, you great... Every, like, my four most... My four most obnoxious jobs was they all the same critique you're great but you talk too much but great guess who gets paid now to talk who talks for a living period period who's a speaker period so you found a way to as we said yes as we use said these before. things against these jobs uh, that you learned at these jobs to go and counter train for your business right endeavors. and it's not even about i say like Guess, I guess if there is a side by side, I make more money than the person that gave me the hardest time. Yeah. Like looking back, I make more money than them. It doesn't make me better than them. It just means that I didn't have to dog anybody out. And like, just think about it from their perspective. This young black woman that was trying to look out for the job, keep her job, show up on time, by the way, and take extra shifts. Whenever there was an extra shift, I was the first one they called. And you took it every time. Oh, yeah. I did a 10-hour shift one time as a cashier. 10 hours. On your feet. Okay? So you're talking to this woman who just got harassed. All this stuff talking down to her. And I can't go nowhere or nothing. How does that make you feel? Yeah. For however much money you make. Maybe $36 an hour? You know, the sad thing is, I think the people that have interactions like that, it never even crosses their mind. Sometimes no. They don't, they don't even take a second to think back on... Oh damn! I probably shouldn't have said that to this person today. Right. Um, now, I ironically, just today, walking into the uh, Shopify studios, I had my ring light, and I was walking through the parking lot, and I was looking for a beam that had some light so I could take a picture. Okay. And I was walking to a beam that was a little far in the parking lot, and the security guard whistled at me. Roof, roof. And I looked at him, and he he was kind of far across the parking lot, so I was like, okay, so he this must be his way of telling me I went too far, so I got I went somewhere else. Now, on my way into where we are now, and I walked by him, he said, um, excuse me. He said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to whistle at you like that. And it's so interesting that we're talking about that because I know that from the moment he did that, that kept crossing his mind. Like, damn, that probably came off a little disrespectful. Yeah, I didn't yeah, make yeah. it sound like that. I wasn't trying to do that to her. So it's it's happens very rarely, but it does happen where some people have those moments of like, Maybe I shouldn't have said it like that. Because when he right. said that, he said, you know, ma'am, he said, I wasn't trying to whistle at you like that. I just didn't want you to get in trouble with some other security guards down there. They didn't, didn't know where you were. Yeah. yeah, they didn't know where you were walking. I said, you know what, so I said, I actually really appreciate you saying that to me. And yeah. coming back to that, you know, like, thank you. I yeah. said, it's okay. Like, I understand how it goes. But before I walked away, I said, thank you again for letting me know that. Because it's just like, damn, I love to know that there are still good people. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's a little bit of mindfulness goes a long way. Yes. It's just thinking outside of yourself for a second, not being dead inside, and also <laughs> not trying to be like me against the world. Everybody's trying to take you down. No, sir or ma'am, I don't want to be the manager at this store that I'm never going to own. No, sir or ma'am, I, I don't. I really don't. Like, this is not an ambition of mine. And I didn't put that on my vision that. board. Right. <laughs> I think also when it comes to these jobs, too, so managers... If, even with me, when I employ people, I understand that this is not the all and end all for them. Yeah. This is not the be all, end all for them. And if they don't seem, it's my job to keep them employed, not their job to keep themselves employed, if that right. makes sense. So these jobs told me exactly what not to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly they how not to treat people. How, exactly how not to treat people. Exactly how much, how much value, how I'm showing them how much my time is worth. Yes. Because everybody that got somewhere either got where I've worked, either got there two places. Hmm. Fill in mm. the blank. <laughs> but I'll say one of the fat one of the one of one of the quickest one of the quickest ways, which is not the quickest way at all, they got there was either they knew somebody mm -hmm. and they slept with somebody. Yeah. You know? I and I I have no problem with sleeping with people. I just want to clarify on this show, we do not we do not shame people for getting the work done. But because work is work. I have no problem with that. But right. don't lie like you didn't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I have no problem with it. If I can if I can and if they're attractive, why not? Why would what what why would Yeah. 
I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it there some way. God right, right. <laughs> Are you gonna pass up Denzel Ooh, to get where you need to be? I'm not passing him Jamie Foxx. I, I know he's. I know he's married, but I'm just giving you an example. Yeah, you I'm not saying? passing him Jamie Foxx. But is there is there booty ugly? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I know work is work. You just say you just put that on my. It'll be on my resume. But please, oh lord, don't you know what? Pictures. But nonetheless, yeah. Another thing is giving your entire adulthood to this company. Yeah. I got re I got pulled in my first one of my first job well my second job I think my second or third job I got pulled into the office um, to get written up and I said is this write up like every I said to the manager is this write up like every other job he said to be honest with you I never worked for another company and he's been there for twenty nine years what so my thing about that was. I don't have any qualms against people that have been with there for long. I, I've had friends and coworkers where they've been with companies for like 13, 14 years. I'm like, wow, you've been here for 13 years? And yeah. they're like, yeah, I'm embarrassed. I'm not. Right. That's consistency. I admire That's that. That's dedication. Right, because I... I couldn't keep a job for more than six months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but they would see the ladder. Yeah. Well, if you're not happy with that, do something about it. If you right. can. Right. But the other way around, it's just like when people do get in that set, it's when they let their world get so small. Yeah. To where I'm talking to you about something and you're not listening to me because it doesn't exist in your world. Yeah. And then I realize everybody that's part of this company has been here for 15 plus years. Thus have the same little right. world of... And that's why the turnover rate's so damn high. Mm. Yeah. So that's the thing because they don't they they don't meld it together between the people that have been here for 10 plus years and the people that have been here for six weeks. Yeah. So the six week people just keep rolling they out and out. Yeah. They don't... And I get some people... Some people, their job is just getting the job. Have you ever seen somebody yeah. that keep like, how do you keep getting hired <laughs> and then not showing up for work? Like some some people, that's just their job, just to get hired, go home, get their little jacket, their little badge, tell their mom they got a job, and, and then never, never show up again. <laughs> and probably get that little check for like four hours, <laughs> and then on to the next job. How do, I don't know how people live like that. I, I really don't. It's like, very stressful, it's, and it's a roller coaster way of living. I couldn't live like that. Like, am I gonna get it? Am I gonna get it? Oh, I got it. Cool, great. Next one. Next one. I, I don't know how they do that. Like, it's literally... Anyways. Anyway, so um, shout out to Justin Luxurious. They help D out really heavy when it comes to this episode. I appreciate them. Look for them on Instagram at Justin Luxurious. <laughs> and also, they have a boutique that's about to open. You can actually subscribe to their newsletter. It is online, Luxurious Boutique. We're going to put it in the YouTube video. And also, you can listen to this podcast on Anchor and Spotify. Now, here comes one of my favorite parts of the show. Plan of the day. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of plants on the table, everybody. I don't know. If you're listening, you can't see it. Maybe you can smell it because it's live in here, boy. <laughs> uh, our plants of the day are as follows. We do have a pathos plant. So the pathos plant is one of the easiest plants to take care of if you are a beginner indoor plant owner. By the way, the plant plug does not have their expertise when it comes to indoor plants. I am sorry. That is where I struggle. I'm getting help in that in that, in that that area. But if anybody wants a pathos plant, they, they just, they're super easy to take care of. It's one of those plants that you can kind of forget to water. Uh, give them a trim, tell them you love them every once in a while, and it'll be good back to you. Next, in the middle of the table, we have a cabbage, y'all. I just grew this cabbage. Well, I didn't grow the cabbage. I had the, I had the honor and privilege of working with the Jack, Jack and Jill South LA chapter. Mm -hmm. They brought me in to help with their community garden and their maintenance, and we just did a huge harvest on our winter garden. By the way, if you are in Southern California and also Southern Eastern parts of Florida, you live in Zone 10. Zone 10 comes in zone A and B, and we have tropical light climates, and we can grow food all year round. Wow, that's I, good to know. I was just talking to somebody from Chicago, and they moved here, and they said, I'm not used to this, because they have the shortest summer in the world, mm -hmm. and also, you can't. And some places <laughs> experience such a deep frost that you're literally trying to grow food in snow. Mm. So we have, the, the, we have another luxury of being able to grow things year round. I want people to know that growing food is not just a spring and summer thing. And also, I really want people to get jiggy with <laughs> uh, eating appropriately compared according to the season. Because if you go into a grocery store, you realize two things. That same food is there all the time. And that's not natural. You're right. Now, I get other things like grapes and cherries come in and out or cranberries. I get that. But I get that because some things are hard to get to others. But every time you go to the grocery store, look at, look at your produce department. All those things are not in season constantly. Do you know there's a citrus season? No. Yeah, citrus season is it's not super long. It's not year-round because of mm. imports. We're able to do that in major grocery store chains because of imports. But the farm-to-table process is five parts. Wow. 
Yeah, it's five parts. So how you can minimize that is shop at farmer's markets. They don't have to be necessarily organic, but they are local. Local is actually better than plant-based for the environment. People think vegan, vegan, vegan is the best for the environment. No, because of processing and also manufacturing and also distribution. Hmm. The best thing for the environment is local. And now, if you do local vegan, hey! <laughs> then it's best, best. I know, you're just like, ah, out there. But if you're doing local is actually more beneficial in some, a lot of cases than plant-based. Now, I, I'm a plant-based person. I just don't push it onto people and, and things like that. I don't push anything onto people anymore. I'm pushing these, though, but I don't, <laughs> I don't put much, push, el uh, push much else onto people uh, other than the emphasis of people should be growing their own food and get accustomed to things. Because in other countries, they don't do that. Yeah. So if you go to other countries and ask for broccoli, and they'll be like, I don't have it. They're, you're like, why? It's like, because it's February, lady. Right. Where's broccoli getting? They're like, oh, you're American, aren't you? <laughs> now we're all embarrassed. <laughs> right? So, uh, uh, <laughs> deep five. <laughs> yeah, so we live in zone 10. We can grow things year-round. And also, I was really, really big on peas, cauliflower, and cabbage. And now while the cabbage is not only a plant of the day because we pulled it, but it is full of calcium. Ooh. Cabbage is full of calcium, and also all greens have some type of protein in it. Peas being my favorite. A cup of peas and actually a cup of broccoli can be anywhere from three to five grams of protein. Wow. Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. So that's why cabbage is the plant of the day. But last but not least, because we got something for everybody, whether you have a vegetable garden, you only have a balcony in your apartment to grow in, or you have a little more space and you're in a drier climate, this is the teddy bear paw succulent. Oh, it is so cute. Oh, it it's is a succulent that's slightly fuzzy and you can touch it. Give it a pet. Yes. <gasps> I thought Are it was going to be like no. prickly. So there's actually a bunch of different species of cacti and succulents. Uh, Dimple is one of the species that you can actually touch and pet. I don't know the species of this one, but this plant actually originates from Africa. It was like a jaca. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could do cute? this all This is like very therapeutic in a way. Like yes. I could do this all day. So teddy bear paw plant, or you can call it panda paw, or you can call it bear paw. It is so cute. You can call it paw paw. Whatever. I know. I want one. Yes, I have one for you. It's at the mini farm in <laughs> South Central. But this is one of my favorite succulents. Somebody gifted it to me back in 2020 for my birthday, and I never looked back. Were you at that party? The Dave and Buster's one? No, I don't think so. You couldn't make it. I, th I think you texted me that you couldn't make it. Yeah, that was the last party of the of the century. It feels like <laughs> because it, I, it was on the 21st of February, and then uh, oh, a yeah. couple weeks, then the whole world shut down. Uh, we shut down March 17th, the day I got. Or was the 50th? You went on a boat. That's I got off you the were. boat. The you were on a boat. That's why the, you couldn't make it. You were on a boat. The day I remember you went you're like, down. You told me, you're like, I have to get ready for this cruise. And I was like, okay. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I've cruises. been in love with this pawpaw paw plant ever since. Uh, they're super easy to grow uh, and take care of. Uh, please do not overwater it. It is a succulent. Mm. It does enjoy full sun. Partial sun, it can also get away with. But also, one way you can tell your succulent's not doing well is that once overwatered uh, and the soil's really, really moist, even with this one, I have not watered this. Um, I just got it and it's really moist and the paws are yellow and breaking off. That is not a good sign. So it's ready for a new home and it's probably root bound. I don't know if people can see that. I'll show the YouTubers. So how often should you water succulents? I know once don't... a month at minimum. Once a month? Mm -hmm. And when you, okay, one question about watering plants. When you water a plant, <laughs> should you feel the, should it, or does it depend on the plant how much water you put in there? Like, should it always be enough water to feel the, like, should you, well, drainage is everything. Okay. Drainage and also soil quality. So there's indoor potting soil and there's outdoor potting soil. I prefer to have perlite in my soil, which is a little white rock. They kind of look like styrofoam. Mm -hmm. They help with absorbing extra excess water. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you want drainage because the market for these plants is mostly in the ceramics and pots we buy it in. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand that indoor plants blow up and also the rarity of the plant makes it more expensive. Nonetheless, if you're just starting out, Something with a ceramic piece can go from easily being ten dollars to twenty six dollars, and guess what? Ain't got no drainage, ain't got no holes, right. nothing. So, in order to safely drill holes in ceramics, you have to get a diamond tip set, which is really expensive drill set tip set. So, I usually I I only sell plants in nursery pots, right? And then tell people to put it. You can put it in a nice ceramic, but at least it'll still the water will still come out. So, when checking for how much water you're supposed to give each plant. With succulents, you can do a sandier soil because the drainage is better. Okay. But you always want to check, does this pot have holes? Okay. Does this ceramic have holes? 
Okay. Yeah, and then it'll, it'll do its own thing. And then also you could do bottom watering too on some plants where say that um, it's just really, it's doing, you water it, but it still looks all dead. It's when you place it in a, sh a, 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 a bowl of water or a sink full of water and the plant will drink from the bottom. And let mm. you know how much it needs, yeah. Okay, because that was because that brought up another question. I've seen people have plants on plates. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, is that improper? Because if you water the plant, doesn't then it, it stay, the water stay? Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's still slightly drain out, because that's mostly to protect um, whatever the plant's sitting on. Okay. Because you don't want a big old dirty brown ring okay. on your table or your balcony or what have you. So that's usually what that protects. So I've seen all types of clay. So I, I, I am not a fan. I know they're beautiful. I grew up with them. My parents were the parents that took home the centerpiece at every wedding. Mm -hmm. They took home the office party plants. Mm -hmm. And my you grandma. should see, like, half of the half of the mini... Well, when you walk through, I have to show you, the house is surrounded by... I, I regrew the office plants. Wow. Yeah, there's a huge tree that we have. It's actually an office plant that I regrew. Like, when they bring them... I just can't stand an orchid. Stop giving away orchids. <laughs> Stop giving away orchids. It's the gift that nobody wants. I'm sorry. The orchids are so mad. They called me and told me. They are a tropical <laughs> plant. They do not want to be inside. Actually, let me, let me say them. They don't want to be in your cold house. They don't want to be on Martha's desk inside getting fluorescent light. They, they love it hot. Actually, orchids will do better in your bathroom. What? The humidity, yeah. If you have a well-lit bathroom, orchids will, will do better in there. And would the steam from the shower mm -hmm. affect affect that at all, or is that why that it would be better? Tropical climates are humid. Dude, I feel like that 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 <laughs> like that meme with that guy. He was just like pointing at his head, oh, like, yeah. "Oh, I got it now! Yeah. Like, got it! I love that. Thank you. Yeah, hmm. you're welcome. So these are the plants of the day, everybody. I do offer cabbage and teddy bear paw plants. If anybody is interested in the mini farm, you can check me out on plantpluglosangeles.com. And actually, we are doing the Prosperity Market February 26th at the African American Museum in Exposition Park. And it's also my birthday. Yes! So we're going to be outside. I had to cancel my indoor birthday party because of COVID. But that's fine because we're going to be outside. We're outside. Yeah, outside. So if anybody needs anything, and also I still have some cabbage starters, please let me know. And also, I want to thank Joe for being on this show. Give it up, everybody. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. You're probably gonna end up coming back. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When Milk and Media is here, you're probably gonna be here too. Do a whole little set, right. little, little track. We're keep it popping and keep it pushing. And I'm just really excited for everything we have to come. Now, what do you have coming up? So I am working on, and I've been working on this, but it's 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 because I want I want to do it right, you know, and I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it quick. So I'm not going to give a timestamp on it but I'm working on a digital masterclass. So I'm creating my first digital course called Positivity All Day Long. I'm going to use the course that I taught already. I've taught it once as a okay. webinar, but now I wanna turn it into something that people can digitally access. So I'll just be teaching positive routines and I'm really excited about that because I learned from my job that I, I were talking about earlier, I love teaching. I love teaching. Me I think too. Out of everything that I do, as much as I love keep it vertical in the fashion of it, I realized very deeply last year that I love teaching. I want to. You're so good at I it. I want to pivot my business to where I just do educational things. Like the clothes will be a part of it always. Right. It'll be the things that I wear in my videos, but I just want to pivot and just be straight educational. Can you tell everybody what keep it vertical means? Keep it vertical means keep your spirit lifted. Keep your head up outside. It's. It's hard, but it's doable, you know? And once you really know yourself, learn yourself, learn positive practices. I tell people, we like a computer or like a car, you know, car needs gas, you know? So when you learn who you are and what you need in terms of, t in order to take care of yourself, like I need coffee and I need baths sometimes and I need <laughs> to turn my phone off and ignore people for like certain hours of the day, maybe once a month, you know? When you know what it is you need to take care of yourself, that's what helps you keep your spirit lifted. Tending to yourself the way we tend to so many other things in the world and not neglecting ourselves in the midst of taking care of so many other things and other people, especially if you're a Pisces, like you said. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Pisces women, and those who identify, the givers, the mm -hmm. helpers, the helpers need help, especially I would say the last month, I understand everybody needs help and have adversity, but this these last couple weeks in particular have just been so heavy with, with 
I, I energy in some way. Like I, I'm not depleted, but I don't want to get there. Mm -hmm. But I've been fighting some demons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, oh. like I'm just thinking, like, are we okay? <laughs> are we okay right now? Right. Are we okay? Am I gonna cry? Right? Am I gonna just randomly like? Am I gonna? It's just coming. Sometimes it just comes out of my face. Mm -hmm. I was like. <laughs> like it just come. I'm like I I can't do anything about it. Or it'll just explode. Like yeah. uh, that Wells Fargo thing. Okay, let me tell you. Yes. Let me tell you. And I was like, okay, here we go. Because remember how the um her name's Amy. Mm -hmm. Amy was asking how you. It's so funny because I did everything but answer that woman's question. I'm so sorry. She's like, do you want? Have you ever worked with the Ins Financial Institution? I said, no, but Joe has. And she was like, do you want president? I'm like, no, but Joe does. I was like, but she was, she was, everybody was there for me. I'm so used to people not being like the, the whole thing. Like I'll make anything about me. Like I'll go to your birthday party and make sure my name's on the cake. Yeah. But for some reason, when it's actually about me, I checked out and I try to give it to other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this award's for everybody. They're like, no, it's for you. I'm like, I'm texting my friend like, Thanks because you bought two tomatoes from me. We made this happen. Wells Fargo pulled up. They're like Taylor. I only bought two tomatoes. I'm like, yeah, but this is for the community. You know, <laughs> that's, that's how I am. You provided the the platform and the foundation for the community. Yeah. You did that. Yeah, Your I keep work. forgetting that. So <laughs> I keep forgetting. I can't. I'm the same way. I so I can't even. <laughs> you did it though. Thank you. So the thing about the Wells Fargo was I um. We're there, right? And all this press is happening around us. And uh, you were there for the commercial. Yes. And you look great. Your skin looks so ah, Thank you. We look, look so good. good. We look we, we all look great. We look good. So, yeah, the, everything. So, they um, they had this, they had a song, they had uh, mostly Spanish media there. So, they had Univision and Telemundo. Okay. And they asked me how my Spanish was. And I'm like, terrible because I, I get really, really stuck on conjunctions. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get from one subject to another subject. Yeah. Um, so, I, and I'll freeze. I'll completely freeze. So, I was like, I can order coffee, though. If you need me to order coffee, I got you. But, so, they said, hey, um, we're going to have a translator for you. So, they had somebody from Wells Fargo translate, and then they had um, Karina from Inclusive Action tra translate. Wow. And they did the whole thing in Spanish. And I was like, cool, this is great. And they hand me the award. And they're like, okay, we're going to film it in English, but can you take your glasses off? And I said... These are prescriptions, but they're transitions. I said it's because of the, the sunglasses part of them. They're like, no, just take your glasses off. And I was like, okay, thank you. So I took them off, and they did it in English. And then the camera, while he was presenting in English, they're like, we have a surprise for you. And I'm like, another award? Right. <laughs> that's what I got. That's what I got. And then they zoomed in. They're like, congratulations. We're going to give you a grant. And I started <gasps> crying. Oh, that's why you said take your glasses off. <laughs> I'm like, ah! And I haven't cried for like two months. You know when you haven't cried for two months, and uh, it all comes out. It is coming from the bottom of your toes. It's right, like backed up. Right. Like, yes. <laughs> and like, of course, they got that on camera. And I was like, why is this camera two inches from my nostrils? <laughs> like, back and they got me. He, they knew exactly what they were doing. You deserve. Thank you. I love that for you. I love that I moment know. for you. I didn't know. I just, I didn't know there was a grant involved. I had no idea. I will just, I thought I'll just take the, I'll take the, I'll take the title of a uh, uh, champion of the city, not, what is it, city champion? Yeah, city, city, city champion. champion. City champion, thank you. I'll take that title, keep it pushing. I have no problem with that. I love, I really appreciate acknowledgement and recognition because these, uh, these other jobs weren't doing it for me. I was in GNC Magazine twice and they sued me. So, <laughs> And that's why they came back and was like, we can't just acknowledge you without giving you this grant. Because yes. you, not only did you really deserve acknowledgement from so many other people and places in your life, but to give you what it was you deserved and then more on top of right. that, I think that just speaks volumes to who you are, what you bring to the community, where you're going. And one thing that I'm going to say, um, because for when I started my business, I had a hard time like having confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. And I told myself this one day, and I'm telling this to you, and I put it on Facebook so I would never forget it. I said, you know what? I'm just going to believe all of the things that other people have told me about me. Like, oh, I think you're going to be a great business owner. Oh, I think you're going to be a speaker. Because oh, people used to tell me this all the time. And right. I was like, what am I going to go into business for? What can I sell? I had one, pa one um, preacher dude tell me, he said, you need to write every day because people are going to read your journals. And I know right. that out of all of the qualities that I have, writing is my best quality. Mm. So for you, I'm reminding you to when you when you find like having those moments of like, oh, yeah, I did do this. Just think about the accolades that you've received and find confidence in who 
was honored in that moment if you mm. don't feel it in the current moment. You right. Know? Go back to be like, oh no, they can't got shit to Taylor. That's me. I'm Taylor. I'm a flip flip. Yeah. Oh my God, that was me. You know, like, admire yourself. Right, without coming from a place of ego. Yeah, without yeah. coming from a place of ego, but in a place a of, of knowing who you are, you know, because right. there's so much, we get so afraid of ego that I don't think we praise ourselves sometimes enough because we ever get afraid of being cocky and it's like, right. but then you also should be afraid of having a low self-esteem where you don't believe in yourself at all, you know, right. so. Or you ain't feeling it. And it's okay to have the downtime, but just to be like, I'm an imposter, this and that. But you know what? When I was feeling the imposter syndrome, once I found out it came from white supremacy and capitalism, I was like, oh, right, that's a <laughs> Yeah, once I found out that stemmed from it, shout out to NAP Ministry for bringing that to my attention. I was like, oh, that, that's not, that has nothing to do with me. I'm good. So I got over imposter syndrome real quick once the NAP Ministry brought that up. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you told yeah. me that because I, I needed to hear that. I, yeah. I never heard but from that. But the joke that got me through that, because I'm one of the people that, I wouldn't call it self-roasting, but... We'll just call it self-roasting. Yeah. I'll make a joke about, I, I just can't take myself too seriously. Agreed. Um, so one of the jokes I would use all the time, which actually landed, because sometimes my jokes get crickets, um, I, uh, was, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I sound like I do. <laughs> and I would tell my, when I, when I was training Destiny at Planet Fitness, I would say that she started busting up. Because I, I didn't have my certification yet as a, as a, as a personal trainer yet. I was right. just working at Planet Fitness. Or when I was training other clients, or when I was doing the investing class. I didn't do the investing class because, like, it's weird with finance. It's so funny. Because you can't say that in a room full of people. You got a Zoom full of 30 people. You're like, I don't know what I'm talking about. They're like, this is my money. I'll kill you. You know? <laughs> but, like, when it came to the plant gardening thing, one of my first clients, I was like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I just sound like I do. Right. And that's what got me through the whole imposter syndrome thing. But once I found out where imposter syndrome came from, I'm like, oh, I didn't make that. that didn't yeah. Make. Oh! Speaking of uh, making things, I have a surprise for you. Is it a grand? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, uh, shout out to Stephen Marcus Relaford. He, he had the best comment on the grant video. Mm -hmm. He said, girl, they need to cut you a blank check. No, for real. A <laughs> blank one. Yeah, a blank one. Because you, you don't even know. I could do it like it's my B-Day on that check, yeah. okay? <laughs> Why is that the anthem, though? And she came up with another banger. I just heard Jocelyn came up with another banger. Yeah. She did. I heard it I heard it the other night. I had to get it. Uh, the men of me getting her on the show, I would die. I, if I got Jocelyn. I'd have to be here. I don't care what I would be no, doing that day. No, all of Chop It Up, Chop It Up, Barbershop Talk, Girl Talk. We all have to be in the same room when that goes down. Yeah. If we ever got the Puerto Rican princess. Period. Like, I would, I don't know. Like, I... I don't even know what I would wear. Like, I'd be so nervous about, like, what? oh, my God, it's the Peter Regan princess. Like, she going, <laughs> like, how do I show up to meet Jocelyn Hernandez? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Vegas, baby. But, yeah, that's the, yeah, I, very, yeah. So, as a thank you, and also because the plant plug keeps you, keeps you plugged in, connected to community, and also, you know, we put people up on game. I have some gifts for you. So, one, for your new line, congratulations on Happy Drip. Thank I really you. love that shirt. You have blessed me with exclusive yes. metamorphosis that is, you know, just continuing to involve and come into yourself. And I'm going to give you some milkweed. So this is butterfly food. Please read the package and also uh, botanical interest. Shout out botanical interest if you want to if you want to hook it up or something like that. I got you. I've been using botanical interest for years. What some of the best seeds I've ever had is there are wonderful liner notes inside the seed packet, and they tell you exactly when to sow. Are you okay? This is so cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh wow. And then you can grow oh. your own food, and also the milkweed. You want to make sure you get the correct milkweed for your region because it can actually make uh, certain butterflies sick. But, Monarch butterflies are one of the most popular, and actually they're protected in other um, in other countries, uh, environmentalists, especially in Mexico. So butterflies migrate from eastern Canada all the way to western southern Mexico by themselves, and a lot of them don't make it because they don't have food and shelter. So we plant these, which could also uh, possibly double as pollinators, don't quote me on that, and it creates food and possible housing where they can hang their cocoons on. Oh! I would love to be a butterfly mom. Mm -hmm. little, so, little, little stop. <laughs> I told a friend about milkweed years ago. He made a whole army of butterflies. He had 30 going. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. And then they could just stop on their way to their, while they're. And they could also make your space home. Wow. Yeah. Like a little underground railroad. Yes. And also, <laughs> since you are, since you got so snatched for Christmas, 
I want to gift you with some cauliflower seeds because I know you're on your keto grind. Period. Oh, I would just said I want to make some cauliflower mac and cheese so, too. Oh, that's bro, This is snowball cauliflower. This is actually still the season. Make sure to read the package. If you don't start them now, you can actually start them again in September, October, and then grow throughout winter. Okay. Uh, they are a little prone to getting bugs in the interleaves, but also cauliflower is actually in the kale family. So they kind of grow the same, but you can have really full white heads and you know, as long as you keep them well watered and also soak your seeds about 24 hours before planting, they're really small, fine seeds, they're like mustard seeds, but you can grow cauliflower year after year and they flower beautifully. So you can get your keto on and make your pizza crust. No, for real. <laughs> oh, and make my mac and cheese. Thank yes. you. Yes, so we got seeds for everybody. Oh, I love this. And they're back to root seeds. Shout out to back to roots too if you're watching and listening. <laughs> you know, I see y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah, one, one of my two favorite seed companies. My other favorite seed company is Botanically Bride has put out her own seeds. I'm really, really excited for her. She's at Prosperity Market um, the January. I met her there. I actually met on Instagram. Hmm. It's interesting how we t I tell people, like, how do you guys meet? On the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, Botanically Bride has amazing seeds out of Sa San Pedro and Compton. So if anybody needs seeds, link up with Botanically Bride on Instagram. So, but for